Today I want to talk to you about tripods. I want to talk to you about my personal experiences with these two tripods. This is the 504 HD kit. This is the 502 AH kit. And um, right now you can see them at their maximum height. Um, and some of the more observant of you would have realized that this is not exactly the maximum height of this particular tripod. This tripod has uh, a unique, both of these have ball, uh, bowls, 75 millimeter bowls, or I'm gonna say 75 millimeter, I don't think this is 75 millimeter, but they don't, both have bowls, which is terrific. If you're an event videographer, uh, you gotta understand the value of uh, a bowl. But um, this one has this unique ability to raise itself beyond this particular point. Now, I owned this one first, uh, and I had another Manfrotto tripod with a different set of legs and a similar head, maybe slightly better head, and I decided to um, move to this one. And the reason was, at that time, the reason was when this was at full height, and um, as I would often do, I would be videotaping a situation where I had to put the tripod at maximum height, um, and I would put a floor spreader to stabilize them even further, uh, I still felt that it was a little shaky. And so um, rigidity was the first concern. Second concern, I wanted something with a slightly, with a better fluid head. Now, whether I got that or not, I'll leave to you to decide. Um, so I'm going to stop the video right now and I'm gonna load these up the way that I would use them loaded up at their full height and you'll be able to see the difference between uh, the relative levels of stability. I've loaded these two tripods with uh, sort of typical gear, trying to make it somewhat even. Uh, 250 is a little heavier, 70 is a little lighter, but kind of comparable. Um, they are both at their maximum height and if you are looking at a point of looking for a point of comparison, I'm five foot four, so that gives you an idea how the high these go. Uh, one thing I've done on this particular tripod is um, I discovered when I had to be shooting this tripod at its full height all the time, I needed a floor spreader. So I've included the floor spreader on here. Um, it's a Manfrotto floor spreader, excellent, not too expensive. It does stabilize it quite a bit. So when you're comparing it, bear that in mind. Um, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna turn off the camera, zoom in on each of the cameras, these cameras here, and I'm going to try and shake them to give you an idea how stable they are at their maximum height. Okay, this is the 502 at maximum height, fully loaded, and I'm going to shake it. Give you an idea what kind of stability that I get from this kind of thing. And I'm not deliberately trying to make it look bad or whatever. I'm trying to give you a frame of reference. I felt like this amount of stability was, uh, was a little unhappy with it. Uh, as you can see, when you look at the price of it and uh, the extreme height that I'm going, um, it's actually doing pretty well. Um, and of course, with a camera like this, you have the optical image stabilization, which helps somewhat when you're shooting. But that was my concern. Okay, this is the 504. It's not as high, so it's not really fair to compare them. 
but I'm just going to attempt to wiggle it. And uh, it's certainly capable of wiggling. Uh, it has a mid-level spreader on it. Um, but you can see it is more stable. Whether it's worth that uh, increased cost is kind of up to you and depends too on how high you typically operate these cameras. Now, one of the other concerns I had was the fluid head. Now, I wanted something a little smoother than the 502. Now, the 502 is actually pretty good, especially right now, which uh, I'm going to demonstrate here a pan. And you can actually see that it's actually very smooth. You can actually get pretty nice smooth action. And this is the vertical action. There doesn't seem to be any hydraulic action at all uh, in the up and down motion at all. Um, if I crank it up a bit, uh, you got, yeah, you can feel some of them, something happening there. It's actually not bad, but I've got it pretty well at the maximum fluid drag that I've got there. So that was a concern whether or not that's good enough for you or not. I think it's good enough for me actually to tell you the truth. Okay, this is the 504. I'm going to take the brakes off here and uh, do a little pan. And now a little lift. It's not a night and day difference. It is, I think it is better. It makes my shooting more enjoyable. Whether it's really worth the money, I... I'm not sure, it, it kind of depends on you, but uh, it is really nice to operate. What, what I'm gonna do right now is turn these cameras around and talk a little bit about some of the convenience features in these two tripods and some of the other elements that make one maybe a better choice for you than the other. Both of these tripod heads have levels, bubble levels. This one here, and this one here. Um, this one is lighted. You hit the little button, the light's up for a few seconds. It is, I, I think, because I shoot live theater and it's usually dark, or limited visibility, I love it. This one, I have to have a, flashlight in my mouth or something and it because of where it's located it's a little harder to see not a deal breaker but you know a little now the brakes on this one uh, this pan brake here is located at the front of the tripod head and if you know where it is it's not difficult to get to or whatever this one the tilt is fantastic it's nice and big you're not going to confuse it with any other um, lock or any other control uh, item on here. Um, it's fantastic. Over here, um, this is my pan uh, lock and this is my tilt lock here. Um, I like them because they're very quick. There's very little you don't have to go very far to get full lock. Uh, I like them because they're the same size and uh, this easy uh, to differentiate them. They're both very handy. Um, the one thing sometimes, I, I know you can't see that from where you are, but this is the lock for the tripod plate and it's very similar in size and uh, be a little confusing um, but good stuff this one doesn't have a counterbalance and without a counterbalance 
what can happen is if you're part way through the show and you've got it just sort of sitting there and maybe you're watching the performance here and uh, outside the viewfinder you might find yourself drifting down or up it's manageable but uh, counterbalance is nice this one has three stops of counterbalance but with the amount of weight that i have with the cameras i have and the gear whatever three i just wish it had four you know it goes one two three um, a little more counter uh, balance would be nice um, both of these tripod heads have, have nice big flat surfaces um, giving a nice uh, positive stable lock I wish that both of them had markings on the side here so I mean often I have the same camera on the same tripod all the time and if I could see the markings then I wouldn't have to fish around I could just put it in the same place it always goes in I mean I could mark it myself or whatever but I, it wouldn't cost them anything to put markings on here and I, I think that would be really uh, a nice feature let me show you how easy they are to put up and down Okay, this is a 502, and it has single column aluminum legs, and I love this. It's got some uh, clips here. I find that uh, I get a little tighter together if I don't use the clips. They're not really necessary, but they're there. Let me just show you. Nothing is faster and easier than what you got here. We're ready to go. How could it be better than that? The 504 is a little more trouble. I'm doing the clips. You can't see that right now. I'm undoing the clip locks at the bottom. You probably can't see that either. Now the first part of that was not too bad. What gets a little bit is the next part dealing with the spreader now I've done this quite a few times so I've got some practice and it came out pretty well of course there's one more stage to go here I'm just gonna put it that high so not quite as quick or easy so if you're buying the 504, these double legs are very stable. They're heavy and they're a little bit finicky to put up and down. If you want something that's fast and easy, if you are an event videographer and you're shooting weddings and you're going to take your gear, move it from here to there, set, excuse me, set up for another shot, you can't get faster and easier than these type of legs. These snap locks, I, I just love them. I have twist locks on a Gitzo. I have twist locks on a Benro. These are still faster and more secure, I think. So those are a couple of considerations. One other thing I'm going to mention, on the... 504. I'll just show you how difficult or easy as you might want to consider it. It is to put this down. Bear in mind, I've had some practice at this. I've been using these legs for a couple of years now. Um, but uh, I'm just locking the bottoms here. I'm just gonna flip it around. Look at these feet. These feet are amazing. 
They're really nice and grippy. They're large. It contributes to the very stable nature of this. Plus, these things come right off and you've got spiked feet for if you're on a, you know, have to go out into a lawn or something like that and then you can keep these dirty or clean. You'll notice this uh, particular version has a mid-level spreader. And for me, a mid-level spreader is essential. Uh, you may be different. For me, the reason that a mid-level spreader is essential is that oftentimes I have to set up in a theater and there is stairs or a slope and uh, specifically the stairs. Um, that middle level, uh, a floor spreader would just be impossible. Floor spreaders get dirty too. Um, even if you're working indoors and the place is relatively clean, you're going to get dust and whatever on there. It's a little bit of annoying. Um, so mid-level spreaders is what I prefer. I would have, if I was going to buy this tripod again, and I certainly would, um, I'd buy it with the optional either carbon fiber or the aluminum legs with the twist locks. Even though I prefer flip locks, um, the single legs are um, faster and easier, lighter um, to use. Um, this guy and this one both come up in a really nice padded bag that's easy to use. One last point here. This guy in ready to, as you see it here without the floor level spreader is 10 pounds lighter than this guy. So if you have to hump it around uh, a lot, you might uh, find that an important consideration. I usually just set it up and, it, and then it's done. So yeah, maybe this is a little bit uh, slower to set up, but basically I set it up and it's done. So if you have any questions or comments, um, please uh, record them below. And um, thanks for watching.